What are the reasons for hearing loops, or any assistive listening system? There are hearing aids, aren't those enough? Well, sometimes yes and sometimes no. A hearing aid works best within about a meter and a half. If the audio source is placed further away, there are several things that make it difficult for a person with hearing aids to hear. Such difficulties can be echoes and reverberations, or noise from a nearby audio source. It is true that there are new smart hearing aids that reduce noise, but if the noise is another person talking, or natural occurring sounds, the hearing aid cannot distinguish that as noise. Such disturbances uh, will have a greater effect on uh, a person relying on hearing aids than a person with regular hearing. The solution is always to move the audio source closer to the listener. If you don't hear a person standing next to you speaking, I bet that without even thinking about it, you would lean in, decreasing the distance between yourself and the person talking. An assistive listening system does just that. When a person talks at a distance from the hearing aid's microphone, the level is reduced due to distance. When the talking distance increases from 1 to 2 meters, the level is reduced by half, which is the same as 6 decibel. When the talking distance increases from 1 meters to 4 meters, the level is reduced to only 1 quarter, or 12 dB down. On top of that, we have envi environmental acoustic problems like reverberation and noise. So the only feasible solution is to shorten the microphone distance and thereby increasing the signal-to-noise ratio. All assistive uh, listening systems have this in common. With the hearing loop system, the microphone distance can be very short, much shorter than one meter. The signal is transmitted wirelessly using the hearing loop system without any acoustic reductions directly to the hearing instrument. And the end result is a clear transmission without noise and level reductions. In order to better understand the hearing loop system, let me explain the basic function of the hearing instrument with a built-in T-coil. There are two basic inputs, M and T. M stands for microphone and T stands for T-coil, which is used for sound transmission through a hearing loop. If the MT switch is in M position, the microphone signal is amplified and processed in order to best compensate for that individual's type of hearing loss. After the signal uh, processing, the electrical signal is converted back to acoustic energy through the ear. By changing the input signal from microphone to T-coil, the transmitted signal from the hearing loop is picked up by the built-in T-coil and gives the same acoustic output level to the user. It is stated in the international standard that a loop system should give the same acoustic output level as a speaker at one meter distance from the hearing aid. There are different assistive listening systems. This is IR. An infrared transmitter takes audio from microphones and other audio sources, like a mixer. The sound is then fed to an output stage, which converts the audio to a frequency-modulated infrared light beam. This beam then passes to the dedicated receiver worn by the listener. The receiver converts the light to either audio for headphones or to a neck loop, which is a miniature hearing loop for uh, users with T-coil equipped hearing aids. The listener must use a receiver. In a public venue, the listener needs to borrow the receiver and the owner needs to maintain and dispense these units. The IR system is sensitive to direct sunlight and the receiver must be in line of sight of the IR radiator. An FM system works like a normal guide system, apart from the components often are and should be adapted for hard of hearing persons. A signal source like a microphone or mixer is connected to an FM transmitter. The listener receives through an FM receiver. Both regular headsets and receivers with induction neck loops can be used. The listener must use a receiver. In a public venue, the listener needs to borrow the receiver and the owner needs to maintain and dispense the units. The FM signals cannot be controlled and can interfere with, the with adjacent systems, like in classrooms and multi-venue cinemas. 
In a loop system, the audio source is connected to the hearing loop amplifier. The voltage signal is transformed to a current by the loop amplifier. Current flows through the loop conductor and a revolving magnetic field is formed around the conductor. Simply explained, the magnetic field fills the space within the cabled perimeter. The magnetic field induces a current in the T-coil inside the hearing aid. The hearing aid converts the current to acoustic output. The listener is not required to wear an external receiver other than the personal T-coil equipped hearing aid. Advocates for IR and FM systems may claim that these systems also provide for people lacking hearing aids by using headsets. The same is true for loop systems. A person without hearing aids can listen to a loop system through a loop receiver with headphones. As there is a world standard for loops, one may also have a personal loop listener which is automatically compatible with all loop systems, just like a hearing aid is. Inside the loop, mostly vertical energy is produced. The magnetic energy must pass through the T-coil in order for it to induce a current. If the T-coil is angled 45 degrees to the direction of the field, the received level is reduced by 3 dB, barely audible. But from a 45 degree to a 90 degree angle, the level drops sharply and is reduced to zero. A practical example may be a, uh, in a classroom or a meeting room. The hearing instrument wearer may lose signal while looking down at their notes. Often the hearing instrument with the T-call is not positioned vertically on the ear to start with, but rather halfway on top of the ear, so the T-call may already be angled when the user stands or sits straight. We'll get back to this. In the two earlier slides I explained how the magnetic field revolves in circles around the loop conductor and that mostly vertical uh, magnetic energy is reduced within the loop area. The reason why the result uh, of the revolving magnetic energy ends up producing vertical energy is that the magnetic field generated by the opposing sides of the loop interact and the combined energy is mostly vertical. There is an international standard for hearing loop system performance. Note that this standard refers to the performance of the installed system and not the hearing loop driver. The standard is called IEC 60118-4. In essence, it says that, that the magnetic background noise should preferably be below minus 47 dBA, but minus 32 dBA is accepted. The frequency range is, def is defined from 100 Hz to 5 kHz. The peak field strength, the 0 dB reference, is 400 mA per meter. The field strength variation must be kept within plus minus 3 dB. The old standard specified an average field strength at 100 mA per meter. The average is still about 100 mA per meter, but it is in the peaks that you find the intelligibility in speech, the defining sounds. The first audio example demonstrates a loop system operating where there is too much background interference where the audio material peaks do not reach the required 400 mA per meter. Notice how the background noise consumes much of the message and the poor intelligibility. Sent directly into your ear, kind of like Wi-Fi for hearing aids. For those with hearing problems, it can make hearing a totally different experience. In the second example, the field strength is sufficient, but the background noise is still at minus 12 dBA. Although audible, the background noise makes it difficult to hear and would be tiresome over time. Sent directly into your ear, kind of like Wi-Fi for hearing aids. For those with hearing problems, it can make hearing a totally different experience. The last uh, example demonstrates a well-working system. Sent directly into your ear, kind of like Wi-Fi for hearing aids. For those with hearing problems, it can make hearing a totally different experience. At some point, if working with loop systems, you will be challenged by metal interference. 
Metals in the construction materials have great impact on the performance of loop systems and need to be addressed at the design stage. On the upper left and right there are graphs of the fuel strength level at the listening height. Remember how this is allowed to vary by 6 dB, plus minus 3 dB. The left graph shows the fuel strength dis distribution in free field. In other words, without metal interference. As you notice, it is quite flat, meaning little variation in fuel strength level across the looped area. But if the same loop uh, would be installed on a reinforced concrete surface, for example, the loop would be would uh, induce a current in the rebar and the signal would be affected in several ways. First, the overall fuel strength would uh, get attenuated, as you can see on the graph on the right. The dotted blue line on the on the graph represent field strength and the green graph shows how the field would have performed in free field. Also notice how the curve would bend. This means that the field uh, would get dramatically weaker the further away you are from the transmitting wire. In other words, towards the center of the loop. The frequency response is also affected. The difference between the 100 Hz which is this graph here, and the 5 kHz, the red graph, can only vary by 3 dB in relation to the 1 kHz reference point, which again is the blue dotted line. There are two ways to address problems with metal interference. One, and the most important, is to adjust the width of the loop. By decreasing distance between wires, you decrease variation in your field strength. Think of it as if you would push the two sides towards each other, and that would reduce the dip in the middle between them. The other way is to use a metal loss corrector, which is a type of tone control, which is built into the driver. This will in different ways boost the high frequencies. An MLC, a metal loss corrector, will help with your frequency response, but not with your, uh, your field strength variation. So adjusting the loop design is 90% of the solution and MLC is 10%. Let's listen to a couple of examples of this. In this example, the loop system is unaffected by metal interference. Sent directly into your ear, kind of like Wi-Fi for hearing aids. For those with hearing problems, it can make hearing a totally different experience. In this second example, a loop system is affected by severe metal loss, starting at 500 hertz. From directly into your ear, kind of like one sound for hearing aids. For those with hearing problems, it can make hearing a totally different experience. As the width of the loop is vital to ensure a system that will meet the, the IEC requirements, we here at Univox design systems according to these rules of thumb. As an example, if the loop cable is installed on reinforced concrete, the maximum loop width allowed is 5 meters. However, the best practice is to go on site and test. Please keep tuned for future videos on how to perform test loops. Here are some of the basic loop designs that we use here at Univox. All can be found in our loop designer software for those of you who already use it. At the top left corner is a perimeter loop. A perimeter loop is the most basic design and the easiest to install. As such, also the cheapest. The design is a good option in small rooms, preferably without construction metals. In free field, the design can also be used for somewhat larger rooms. A side effect of all loops is overspill, which is the it's the magnetic field that forms outside the loop. It stretches as far as the width of the loop itself. So, the bigger the loop, the further the loop system will spill over. The other design at the top is called the cancellation loop. It works the same way as the perimeter loop in all aspects except that the overspill can be limited in one dimension. It is achieved by the two turn narrow segment which will form a field of its own and hold back the overspill from the main loop. The two turn loop corridor is generated from twice the current that of the rest of the loop. So although smaller, the field generated is, generated is stronger. I like to think of it as a wall that holds back the main field to spill over. On the bottom left is a design called the figure 8. It's a multi-segment loop used to combat metal loss effects. 
By dividing the area in segments, the listener will always be closer to the wires than in a perimeter loop of equal size and less likely to suffer the effects from metal loss. A figure 8 design can have any number of segments. A downside with a figure 8 uh, are the null zones above the wires. Above the wire, the magnetic field will produce horizontal energy instead of vertical, which cannot pass through the T-coil in the hearing aid. This will cause a silent spot, a null zone. An SLS design, also called face the ray design, produces a more evening listening space than the figure 8. This is achieved by its dual channel system. Simply explained, it consists of two overlapping figure 8 designs. An SLS design is always the best solution for audio quality and to battle metal loss. An SLS system is a two-channel system, but not in the sense that it broadcasts two different program materials. The same material is played on both channels. But to prevent the two channels or the two figure eight systems to interfere with, e with each other, one channel is phase shifted 90 degrees. This makes both figure eights work independently from each other, but the overlapping design makes it cover its sibling channels null zones. Do you remember the classroom from the beginning of the presentation where we talked about vertical energy and how a person may lose signal while looking down at their notes? In an SLS system, the overlapping uh, loop segments produce both the vertical and horizontal fields. So wherever the listener is positioned, looking straight or down at their notes, the T-call can never be angled more than 45 degrees to any field generated. The maximum level reduction is 3 dB. Thank you for watching this introduction to hearing loops. If you don't already have access to the Univox Loop Designer, please contact us or one of our distribution partners across the world about how to become a Univox partner. Thank you.